Hello and welcome to this uh, video that we're making. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Chun-Li 5. Uh, specifically because this is the purple card for this coming retro event. So um, many of you probably don't know what Chun-Li 5 does. Uh, she's a 7 hand size, 20 vitality, air, earth, water. Uh, you can discard one momentum to give your kick multiple one. Um, it's fairly heavily costed considering what it's giving you uh, by today's standards. But it's pretty good. It's okay. Uh, and then E commit, commit X foundations. Your attack at, with multiple and its multiple copies will get plus X damage. X equals multiple value of the attack. Essentially what this means is if your attack has multiple two, you can commit Chun-Li and two more foundations to give the copy and all the multiples plus two damage. Uh, we are going to be playing this card in the upcoming retro event. So uh, I was actually the one on the stream when they were asking for requests for the purple card. And I said, hey, do Chun-Li 5. Uh, just because I was a big fan of Dark Path, that's around when I started getting into the game. Back when this card came out, this was one of the first... This might be the first starter deck I ever purchased for UFS, so this card, you know, strikes 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 home for me. Um, but we're gonna try to build a deck for this card where it's gonna take advantage of its abilities in some way, uh, and we're gonna see how good we can do in the retro event with it. All right, as now we just jumped forward and I replaced the sticky pad in the game with the notepad because this is gonna make more sense. So Chun uh, Chun Li Five, that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, goals for this is to uh, run at least one kick to take advantage of her multiple ability. Okay, uh, we are going to um, run at least one multiple. It's either two or higher, so twos or threes, we'll do that. Um, to take advantage of her second E. Okay, uh, she's a five-hander. No, she's a seven-hand size. Five-hander. She's a seven-hand size, 20 vitality. Air, earth, water, right? Um, so we will... Uh, we're going to need some form of momentum. Need some form Oh, come on, of um, mom gen. We'll need that. Um, we will need a plan of survival. We'll need a plan to survive. Okay. We will need at least two win conditions. So I'm saying I need at least two win conditions because. Um, Neither of her abilities will innately get me a win in any, any way. Um, her, her card doesn't add a ton of value to things. She can take advantage of having surplus momentum and translate it into multiples and kicks. And then she can take advantage of surplus staging area and turn it into damage on multiples. So knowing that is um, try to uh, fit in surplus uh, mom engine and surplus uh, stage size support. We'll just leave it like that. So we're trying to fit in. Um, we need we need some form of momentum gen generation. We need to try to fit in a method to gain surplus momentum so that we we'll always have more momentum than we can spend, so that we can always take advantage of the opportunity when they arise to use that momentum. Uh, and we want to have a surplus staging area, or at least committable resources that we can commit into uh, her enhance. Um, we'll see if there's anything else we can do. Uh, let's see if we can take advantage of um, committed character. I'm probably spelling things wrong. That's okay. Character, because I think uh, Lilith, Lilith support can do that. So she can take advantage of the fact that she's committed. Um, we're going to uh, try to multiple on kick reversals. Okay, so we're going to try to multiple on kick reversals. If we're running reversals, um, need an engine to block. So uh, blocking engine is uh, speed reduction, so we need to run speed reduction. 
so that we can block consistently, which means so we can play reversals without over committing resources. Um, what else is this deck going to need? So we need to be able to block, we need to be able to reversal. Blocking and reversaling is two cards in hand, which means we only have five to play with. Um, some form of card draw. So this deck is needy. It is a needy deck already, uh, just on the pre-planning. So I need to be running kicks. I need to be running multiples. Okay. I need momentum generation. I need a lot of momentum generation if I want to get surplus. I need a survival plan. Um, so I think a survival plan is going to be block consistency. Uh, yeah, and that fits in with being a seven hand sizer. Um, on Earth, Earth has some really good damage reduction. Uh, it has a really good damage reduction. We'll see. So the the argument here, okay, so let's talk about this. So the argument here on Earth is uh, on Earth, running cards like, uh, because I have access to Toughest Punk and I have access to Wall of Goro. So both of those cards can flip to reduce damage by three. Um, so that does not align with a blocking engine for reversals. It does not do that. But what it does do is it has flip cost to uh, give me a plan of survival. So it, it covers this one. So it gives me a plan of survival. It has a flip cost, so it allows me more resources to commit. So I can, uh, I'll have surplus stage size, technically. That sort of checks that box. Because so then I can commit it later on for uh, multiple pump if I want to. So it does that, whereas if I didn't run those and I ran speed reduction and card draw in replace of those two cards, then I would be able to do other things, but if they were commit costs. So if there's speed reduction that doesn't commit, then that's probably what I'll go with. And I think there is. I think there is. Um, so this is this is the um, this is the uh, deck outline. Okay, so this is what I'm building, right? So these are my main objectives. Uh, when I come with, uh, so let's write win condition uh, one, win, oh, that wand, wow. Win condition uh, two, and then we'll uh, see what those are when we get to them. Uh, I'm gonna go jump into ultra, and then I'm gonna pill the deck using these things. I'll pull it up and then we'll talk about it, and we'll see if, uh, how things align and then we'll make some changes on the fly. So I'll, I'll build the deck and I'll come review these things uh, and then we'll talk about it. Cool? Cool. Okay, so uh, flash into the future here. We have um, on screen the framework of uh, an earth build for Chun-Li 5. Um, I picked all these cards and I'll tell you why I picked them um, and then we'll go through and kind of figure out what the copies are. We'll review what our objectives are and we'll kind of assemble the deck that way. Um, so we're going to run Big Cyclone. So Big Cyclone is seven difficulty. It's going to be hard to push this thing out. However, it protects us from discard uh, strategies. Um, ben Shoemaker showed up a lot last tournament for some reason, so this card will kind of future-proof us for that. On top of it, it is the biggest damage kick attack that we get now that this card got MRP to have kick instead of ranged. So we can multiple one this if we have two momentum. So either way, that's a hilarious way to open an attack string is just drop uh, two, four mid-tens. So it's, it's got its place. Uh, also, if our opponent does happen to fall into the discard trap with this card, we can uh, hopefully just get a multiple one on our opponent's turn with this thing and just kill people. It's, it's not fantastic, but it's the biggest threat kick that I can find. Uh, and I want to run it just because it's hilarious. And I don't know if Big Cyclone's ever going to be cooler than, than what we can do in this deck. Um, I'm running uh, Hoya Houston. I really like this card. I don't think it gets enough love. Probably because it has a two check on it. If it had a three check, it'd be really good. If it that two check really gets it pushed down the line, um, it's four four difficulty, three mid six uh, damage, one uh, plus one mid block, and a two check. It's a fury kick, multiple one, and it combos on fury. The combo enhance is what Chun Li can already do: discard a momentum to get plus one to its multiple rating, whereas Chun Li just gives it multiple one, uh, and then on its Self, we can discard a card to add a face down foundation to our momentum. So we can use it to gain momentum. So it's momentum generation on its own. It's a kick, so we can put multiple on it with Chun Li. If we just have tons of momentum sitting around, we can push this thing 
to multiple three, right? So we can get four uh, copies of this thing out technically. So that's really cool and generates momentum on its own. So yeah, it's, it's got some stuff. It combos off Fury. Uh, we are running three Furies in this uh, attack lineup that, I'm, that I've selected. So Betrayer Betrayal, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. I can take advantage of my character being committed. So uh, if your character is sealed or committed, draw two cards. Uh, so Chun-Li 5, I can commit her and then commit zero foundations so that my attack and its multiple copies get plus zero damage. Um, I can do that. X equals multiple value and there is no multiple value. So I can just do this and pay the cost of zero because it returns null. So I can just commit my character and draw two cards off Betrayer Betrayal, which is pretty sweet. It's a reversal. It's a stun one. So I can take advantage of that. Um, that's always good. I love stun reversals. Your next printed mid gets three damage, or your next printed three damage attack this turn gets plus two, plus two. We are running um, three, so we're running Betrayer Betrayal, we're running Hurricane Upper, and we are running Swallow Your Soul. So uh, we can combo some things off that way, and we can get the value there. It's also a Fury, so it combos into Hoyukusen, so we get that, that nice flow. Uh, we're going to run Reptile Slide. I don't know how many we're going to run, um, just because, again, it's a kick. So it's a kick reversal that I can tutor out of my discard pile if I have two mid attacks in my hand. So the majority of this attack lineup is mid already. So with reptile slide in some situations I can just get the free reptile slide into the card pool and then if I have two momentum I can multiple one it. So um, three mid five, three mid five on reversal is pretty sweet. And then if I want I can I can chunley to push it to six. Right? So then I have two three mid sixes. Uh, that's that's pretty decent. Um, so I don't know where I'm going to run this thing at yet, but I, I really like the idea of being able to reversal kick um, for quote-unquote free. It gives you card draw on it. Hurricane Upper, uh, obviously, it's multiple two, so I can take advantage of the multiple thing that I was talking about. So from out of my uh, deck outline, I want to run at least one kick to take advantage of the multiple um, ability, and then run at least one multiple two plus to take advantage of her second E, and then we have uh, Hurricane Upper to do that. Worst case scenario, I can play out the multiple uh, two and then give them all plus two damage, turn it to two low five, two low five, two low five. That's cute, but we can mostly take advantage of the first E to just gain a momentum off playing it. That is pretty great, uh, and we can choose what momentum that is. Uh, I don't think there's any situations in this deck where we're going to be drawing our momentum, so I may add that in. I may add in the card draw to draw the momentum, but right now I'm just figuring out my deck engine, so we'll do that as we tailor along. Um, Swallow Your Soul, this thing's pretty great in this. So if this attack deals three or more damage, I get the top card of my deck to my momentum. It's a throw, so it will also gain momentum off doing damage. And then combo, if I combo it off a three damage attack, it'll get plus one damage for each card in your card pool. You only need two, pushes it up to five, half block means to deal three, so you get the momentum off of damage and you get the momentum off of hitting them with a throw. So it's a very good opening card, right? So if you go Hurricane Upper, first E, gain a momentum, then you go Swallow Your Soul, do three damage, gain another momentum, then we can go into whatever else we could, if we have enough, we can just big cyclone multiple one because we have two momentum at that point. Um, whatever we're going to do. Um, I have Kika Show as well. I don't know how, quite how I feel about this card. So it's Fury. If my opponent blocks one of my attacks, I can play it at minus three plus three, so it turns into a three difficulty six six. That's important. So three difficulty six six is great. Six difficulty three six is terrible. So depending on how my opponent's gonna block things. Big Cyclone, I almost know my opponent's always gonna try to block that 10 damage. So if I open Big Cyclone, uh, I can easily get the Kika Show off. And then the Kika Show will tuck in the Big Cyclone and then ready something um, that I committed to pass the Big Cyclone, right? It'll if the stack speed is 6 or greater, I can write something. So I, that's the logic there. Same thing with uh, Hoyakusen. If I just open Hoyakusen, discard a card, get a face down into my momentum, and then they block it, then I can keep show off that. Um, I don't know how I feel completely about it. It works on any block, so if they block anything, even if I throw a Hurricane Upper and they just block it, I can keep show 3, 6, mid 6, and I just get the ready effect. I don't get the, the kick momentum. So uh, I don't know how I feel about this yet. And this will be a, a weird testy card. But it's also a Fury that I can combo into Hoyukusen. So you can do the weird things where you can go big Cyclone, Kikisho, Hoyo, and it, and it kind of works out. It's it's cumbersome, and it was a bit awkward trying to figure out how I could do this uh, while still taking advantage of my... Still, still checking off the boxes I want to check off. Okay, so then coming up to my assets and actions. Uh, Winners Never Quit is cool. 
After I block with this card, I can add a non-reversal attack from my discard pile back to my hand, and then this removes itself at the end phase. So I can grab like a big cyclone and then block with it because it has that while the card's in your card pool, they can't uh, pump their damage and speed. So you can use Winners Never Quit to grab Big Cyclone. Another cool thing is you can Winners Never Quit, respond, grab something like a Big Cyclone, and then if you had another mid in your hand, you could reveal the two to trigger the Reptile Slide. That's kind of the whole uh, interaction there. So I really like the Winners Never Quit, Big Cyclone, Reptile Slide kind of interaction. Uh, Omega Sword, obviously ignore block progressive and you get damage bonus equal to block modifiers. Really good with Swallow Your Soul, puts plus four damage on it. Um, it's really good as you start getting into, so Rep Slide has three, Betrayer has two, Hurricane Emperor has three. It's taking advantage of these terrible blocks. Uh, Kiki Show has three. So it makes those terrible blocks and makes them better. Yeah. Uh, Elk Shield. Um, after a block, you only take one, and I can flip one to make my opponent flip one. That's pretty good when we start mixing it with uh, Guardian of the Spirit Sword. So flip, discard a card to add an asset from discard pile to your hand so I can tutor it. If I needed to stop shotguns or big throws, um, I can only take one damage instead of more. Um, additional knowledge, it's a if my opponent reversals me, I can clear my card pool, draw cards. But primarily it's in there so I can just form, flip it, and just get momentum. It's just straight up momentum from my hand. Uh, so that, that's, that's good. Uh, coming over here, knowing what we talked about, we need speed reduction. So this is my speed reduction package right here. We have Bakery Poster Girl, uh, reduces things to zero. Um, second Saintly Beast will either pump speed or reduce speed once per turn. Uh, Guarding the Spirit Sword once per turn, speed reduction, and then grabs me assets. And then Avoiding Assassination cuts me for speed reduction as well. Um, I did bring in the Wall of Goro and Toughest Punk in Junior High, although I don't know if they're going to hold their slots. They have really bad blocks on them. And uh, I have Agent Team as well for that throw reduction, so before block step of a throw, reduce it to one. And then uh, destruction prevention as well. So these cards may change depending on what my need is now now that I'm going through this. Um, Yadimir is tech, right? Uh, blanks out an attack. Protecting the protector protects us from, you know, all the protecting. Uh, Cat Force is targeted stage removal. This card's fantastic. Sweet Lord, you should be running it if you're not. I don't know. Uh, Dark Side of Karma, it, because I'm running so many two checks, I'm running Big Cyclone and Hoya Houston, and uh, I'll probably be over four, uh, four two checks by the time we're done. This thing is in turn one playable, and it's a little bit risky that way. It, it'll probably come in at one or two copies, and then that's it. Uh, after an enhance is played on, I want to cancel it and return attacks to printed speed. So this also connects in with my speed, speed mumbo jumbo, depending on how things go, and then just push the limit. It falls into the tech category. Uh, flips flips my opponent's cards face down. Um, looking at this now, and even just talking through it, I've kind of already figured out some alterations I want to make. Um, before I get into that sideboard, this is my sideboard that I'm building, so Angel Discus, uh, non-reversal attack that I can grab with Winners Never Quit if I need a chain block, um, and then overly dramatic for overly dramatic things. I've just started to put the side, sideboard together. So even just looking at this, I don't want um, I don't want Toughest Punk. I think I want Wall of Goro at two, and Agent Team at one. I think. I say I think. The reason why I want Wall of Goro at two is because we're gaining momentum in this deck, and I can e-commit, discard a card, draw a card, as long as I have a momentum, and uh, looking at more cards is important. So that falls into uh, some form of card draw, question mark. Um, it's it's not card draw that we want, but it's, it's card review, which is always good. Uh, we did get card draw off of Betrayer Betrayal, so that's good. Um, and that's kind of all I'm getting there, though. Um, but looking at this one, where twice per turn, I can flip a foundation, and both players will flip a, uh, commit a face-up foundation. Um, that kind of makes me want to go, so that gives me some stun. Second Saintly gives me speed for milling myself. Milling myself sets up my discard pile for Winners Never Quit plays and for Reptile Slide plays. So I'm liking how that flow works. Um, Hurricane Upper pulls things from my discard pile. So I'm already getting some discard recur uh, discard work here. Guardian's getting me some discard work. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff in here that wants to take advantage of the discard pile. Uh, on Earth, the cards that pull things from discard pile, I believe, are Surveyor. And, and we're back. OK. So I found four cards on Earth that look of interest in regards to momentum. So we have Surveyor, add one momentum to your hand. 
Okay, uh, your low attack gets plus three damage, but it's a three diff, and we talked about three diffs, so we're running a lot of twos, that's scary. Uh, we do have Dark Tournament Looms. Add one card from your momentum to your hand and draw one card, and it removes itself. Um, corner your prey, reveal a face down momentum. If it's an attack, you can attempt to play it, ignoring your progressive. And then we have Hunters once more, so after you play another copy of this card, add that card to your momentum. The reason why I pulled this card out is because it's doing uh, the same thing that like additional knowledge is going to do, and that like uh, Hoyu Houston are going to do. She's going to gain momentum uh, versus a card in her hand. Only I can trigger this on block, right? So I can respond after playing as a block. So I can play the first one and then play them as blocks and then still gain momentum off them. So that's really cool. It is cool. So I'm going to put this down here because I like that a lot. Um, and then Surveyor. Hmm. So these are my three options for grabbing momentum back. Now, uh, going back over here, this, this creates an awkward situation. So I do have some card draw now. I got a Betrayal Betrayal, and I have some pseudo draw on Wall of Goro. So I have card filtering, some card draw. Winners Never Quit gets me a card. Uh, Reptile Slide is pseudo draw on itself because I'm plus oneing off of revealing. So I reveal to gain a card that gets played. Um, we got some tricks seized that way. Um, things like uh, Guardian Spirit Sword to discard a card, draw a card. It's it's more controlled review, whereas Wall of Goro is blind review, right? Because I'm just reviewing a card to draw a different card that I want, right? Same thing with Surveyor. Surveyor is technically a plus one, but I'm losing momentum. Uh, right, so according to your prey, it's just weaker Dark Tournament. So let's get rid of that. I don't like the numbers on it anyways. So we're looking at Surveyor or Dark Tournament. So we're going to bring Surveyor down um, here for now, and Dark Tournament can come up here. I don't know what for copies of any of these I'm going to run yet. but So Hurricane Upper then can grab stuff from the discard pile, and I can use Surveyor to draw it. I don't know if that's too slow. right? Additionally, if I hit them with uh, Swallow Your Soul, I can then draw it. But here's the thing. So if I'm going to Surveyor, I'm just thinking through this process. The only time I want to surveyor is if the momentum I'm drawing out of my, uh, if I, the momentum I'm grabbing can do more when it's played as an attack versus what I can get out of it as a momentum. Okay, so uh, like if I have two momentum, I can turn that into another big cyclone, right? Whereas if I'm just gaining top deck momentum from something like Swallow Your Soul or I'm getting momentum off additional knowledge, or even let's say if I swallowed your soul on turn one and that's how I got my two momentum, would I want a surveyor to grab a swallow your soul? So I'm committing one to grab a swallow, then I have to play that swallow again. What value am I getting off of the second swallow? Whereas the two momentum I get off those enables me to do reptile slide reversals. Or it enables me to start doing Hoyakusen multiples. It enables me to do big cyclone multiples, right? Like the value I get off of just holding two momentum I think is bigger than I get off of the surveyor. I might still want one because I can tutor things with it. Like I can tutor a big cyclone if I get the hurricane number, but I just don't know if it's fast enough for the current meta. Because um, I have to play a card, I have to find hurricane upper, play hurricane upper, tutor something from the discard pile, then get it. Like I can use it with Kikusho to recycle something, but again, then I'm committing a surveyor. I can commit the surveyor, grab the momentum, ready the surveyor. No, see that doesn't even fit correctly. The timing doesn't even work with that either. See, I don't, I don't like the feeling of surveyor. I just don't like how it feels. Dark tournament looms, feels better. Worst case scenario, it replaces itself. So even if I have zero momentum, I can play this, and it draws another card. It does the same thing Wall of Goro does, but from the hand, and it's got a better block. Ugh. That's. That's a trick. This doesn't discard a card technically, this discards a card from hand. So I'm just trying to think through the situation. So what if my opponent has revoke and they're going to revoke this? I enhance Wall of Goro, discard a card, they revoke it, I don't get to know the discard a card is in the effect. So they would revoke the entire thing. Uh, whereas this one, I have to play this card from my hand, so I'm still minus one from my hand. Um, gain a momentum, draw a card. Because this is form add a momentum to my hand. This is enhance add a momentum to my hand. 
I think I lose Surveyor. I think I keep Dark Tournament Looms. Here's the logic. So Surveyor can go in, but it's a form get momentum. So it's only really valuable on the uh, offensive turn, kind of. Um, I can still try to pick a block out, I guess, with it. If I know I hit. The thing is, the thing I know that I'm going to get into my momentum a lot is Swallow Your Soul, because it's my throw. And it's got a 4 plus low block. Like, I'm not going to be wanting to tutor this out to block with anyways. The only time I'm going to want to tutor a block is if it's one of these two. Right? Otherwise, I'm grabbing blind blocks, and I don't I don't like that either. This at least lets me cantrip on its own. Uh, so, worst case scenario, it just turns into another card in my deck. So running this card at 1 isn't going to hurt me in any way. I'll never choke on it in my hand and have like two of them and no attacks to play if I just run one. I think that feels okay. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I'm getting high in the actions now. This comes down. We're getting crazy. Okay, so at most we're going to run two Walagoros. Okay, so now let's start picking our numbers of things. I like two Walagoro. I like one Agent Team. This is my damage reduction package. Uh, speed reduction. Uh, at least two Bakery Poster Girls. I like that. This more so presents the threat of uh, over-enhancing on attacks, uh, save for me to reduce it to zero and get free blocks. Um, second, Saintly Beast, because this will add speed as well as reduce speed. Um, I kind of want four of it, so we're going to go like this. So I kind of want four second Saintlies. It does the things I want. Gives me speed. It's filling up my discard pile for any kind of uh, discard pile nonsense. It's got Breaker on it, so I can block with it too. Like, it's just so good. Um, let's move some stuff around. Right, and then I th think I want... I'm trying to think if I want four copies of this or not. It's got a two plus high block. That's pretty good. It's got a three plus high block. Uh, let's start with two copies. They're basically kind of like a different version of Second Saintly. Except for I can flip, discard a card, and tutor uh, one of my one of my assets, which all have plus one blocks on them, which are all pretty good. Right? Right. Um, and then we have this guy. I don't want to be over-cutting myself for... Because uh, I only have 20 vitality, so that's a pretty expensive cost for minus one speed. But it, it fits in with all this. So this gives me a 10-card speed reduction package right now. So 10 cards out of between 60 to 70 card deck, that's pretty good, right? So if you look at your character and your character is a 7 hand size, as long as one out of every 7 cards is a speed reduction card, then I run a very good chance of seeing one in every hand, uh, or at least seeing one turn one, right? So like if you took her, with 6 hand size it's easy because you can just build 60 cards and then you can allocate what card in your hand is going to be what based on how you build it. So you can do the same kind of thing with 7 and 70 if you really want. So if I ran 70 cards and then 10 of them were speed reduction, I'd be like, oh yeah, well, technically one card out of every 7 in every hand would be a speed reduction then. Right? Following along. Following along. Hunters once more. So this is a card where you need one out to get the other ones to work. This is a 4 or nothing. Or it just doesn't do its job. Down here. Yada is going to be one of you see, so you can come up here. Yada and Agent Team. Very good. Um, Cat Force. I usually like this at 4. It can drop down to 3, but it's a very, very strong card. Protecting the Protector, uh, 2 of. The reason why it's 2 of is because once you have more than one copy out, the other copies get redundant very quickly, but you want to see it. It's also non-unique, so there's not a major disadvantage to finding the second, and having a second uh, prevents my opponent from being able to deal with the first one. And then, um, in some, if they manage to get through it and they can deal with the first one, then there's a second one for a safety net. So uh, two is a good good count. Three would be way too much. One you can run, you can argue one, but then you run a significantly less chance of finding. Uh, we got our single copy of Dark Side of Karma. I think I want a single copy of Dreaming Becoming Whole. Just one. Same thing, um, I could run multiples of this, but then the E discard a momentum for my next check to get plus one. The odds of me having that much momentum that I can feed into it uh, multiple copies of this in one turn is doesn't make, or in one attack doesn't make sense. And then on top of that, even though they can all piggyback off of a single momentum discard, the odds of me committing 
multiples of them every single time and then discarding one momentum. Like, it's just, I get the response value for having multiples out, but I do not get multiple value on the enhances. So having one's good because I'll always get maximum value out of the card, but having multiples out of it, the second copy is slightly less valuable than the first copy. So that's why running one is great because I get full value out of it, running more than one out of it. Then it, because it's, because the multiples get lesser value, um, I'm the, it's a lesser value card being compared to everything else that I could be running instead. Like push the limit. Push the limit. So after you play this card, your opponent flips the foundation. I, that's great. Issues I am finding here. So right now, uh, off what I'm noticing, I don't. I, the only way I generate face downs is either with Wall Goro, giving it, making itself face down. Uh, Dark Side of Karma would flip face down. And Omega Sword can flip stuff face down. That's the only way that I make face downs, which is making Hoyakusen a little bit more difficult to trigger. I'm going to go look to see if there's other flip effect, because uh, avoiding assassination I might not keep. I might pull this out. Uh, I'm going to go check that really quickly and come right back. Oh, okay, we're back. Um, so I went through and I looked at flip cost, uh, spam foundations on Earth, and I got three that caught my eye. I have a ranging deal, desperation E flip to draw a card, so this gives me plus one. It's got better numbers on it, so it's got a two plus block, which is great. It's got a six check, great. Um, I got Hell's, Hell's Reach, zero diff five, flip to ready this card, playable while committed. So this plays into the idea that I want surplus resources to commit. So this will help me ready things. Uh, it's taking up a similar slot to be dreaming of becoming whole. So I might swap these out like this, just like that to start with. And then pursuing a vendetta, flip after a foundation leaves your staging area, uh, add a foundation from your discard pile to your staging area committed. So um, protecting the protector prevents committing, destruction, flip, remove, seal, all that stuff. This just prevents uh, foundations from leaving my staging area. And it doesn't prevent it, it doesn't cancel it, it just lets me tutor something afterwards. Um, pursuing is going to go to the sideboard though. Uh, I think dreaming is going to go away. And arranging a deal might come in in some capacity. We're going to bring it in at two right now. And we'll see how that feels. Um, we'll go like this. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this. I got 10 foundations, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 foundations. Oh, I want to make that an even 30. Two push limits. There we go, just for now. 30 foundations. We're at exactly 30 foundations. So now I can go to 30 attacks and actions, and then we'll fill out some numbers here. So winners never quit. I want at least two. I like that card a lot. Each of the sword shield combos, we'll run it one each for now. Same reason. So these cards are really good, and they can almost justify running two X's on their own. I'm trying to think if I have good... You know what? I have Wall Girl that I can discard draw cards. I have Hoyukusen that discards a card to get... Uh, it's discard a card and debuild one, just from a one momentum. It's such a greedy card. It's so, so greedy. I don't think I have anything else that sticks things from my hand anywhere. Oh, I do. I have Guardian Spirits where I can discard cards to get a different asset. So you know what? Like these can be run at two copies each. Right? Mm. You know what? I only want one Owl Shield. I think I want two Elk Shields. I want to be able to tutor them with Guardian Spirit Sword. Hornbrook Bach. So this card I haven't talked about yet. Commit your after if your attack deals damage, you can add a face down card from my card pool to my hand, um, so you can get a multiple copy back. But that's not what we're running it for. We're running it for the second enhance. This attack gets plus one damage. If this attack is blocked, I can add a card from my discard pile into my momentum. Only playable while it's committed, but both players can play it. Here's the catch, though. Uh, I do have Big Cyclone. A Big Cyclone says, while the card's in your card pool, my opponent cannot play abilities that grant speed or damage bonuses, and Hornbrook Bach gives the attack plus one damage. So if I do get the Big Cyclone off, I can um, block with Big Cyclone and stop them from doing Hornbrook Bach nonsense on my own turn. 
right? They'll get the one momentum off of it on the first attack that they play, but I don't know if I care. Additionally, I can use Geek Show to ready it. If I go like attack, attack, blah, 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 and then Geek Show at the end if they block something, right? See how that goes. Um, additional knowledge is just straight up momentum gain. I don't know if I'm going to need this. I just don't know yet. It's very like... These two cards are directly contradictory to each other. Turn a card in my card pool face down, then add discard your momentum. Horn to block, if your attack takes damage, you may add a face down card. Ah, there's some plays that can be made here. There's some cute stuff that can happen. You know? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 cards. 10 cards that take up the action asset slot. I think I'm okay with that for now. That's good. So we're at 40 cards. I can put 20 attacks in now. That's that's pretty aggressive, considering I'm a 7-hand sizer. Um, I probably don't need to run 20. I can probably go a little bit less, and it'll be okay. So coming down here, um, I need at least two big cyclone. That thing's too funny. Uh, we're going to go two of everything to start with. Um, okay. Two of everything to start with. So that's going to put me at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So six more cards. I could technically just grab six of them and run one more each. Puts me at 18. Or what? Yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. No, so that'll put me at 20. Hmm. I really like Reptile Slide. Now that I'm looking at how this whole thing plays out. Maybe we go one additional knowledge. Maybe we go one additional knowledge. We're going to go another Winners Never Quit. So we got three of these. I like that. So we go three Winners Never Quit. We're going to go... Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's all that. I kind of want to run a third Reptile Slide. Kika Show... I want to run you a one. Honestly, one Kika show seems okay. Um, I want another one of these. I want another one of these. What does that put me at here? Uh, another Swallow Your Soul at least. And another Hurricane Upper. Where are we at here? Six. Twelve. 15, 16, 17, we're at 18. We need two more attacks. We don't need two more attacks. You know what I mean. How would I feel about this? Two more attacks. Okay, let's pause for a second. Let's look back over here. Now that we're looking at this. Run at least one kick, take advantage of multiple abilities. We're running Big Cyclone and Reptile Slide to take advantage of giving kicks multiple. Run at least one multiple two plus to take advantage of her second E. Uh, technically, Hoya Kusin can push itself up to multiple two. And then Hurricane Upper has multiple two on it. So uh, the most greedy play we can make that takes a lot of resources, if we have tons of momentum, we can push Hoyakusen up to multiple two, then additionally give it multiple one, play out four multiple, well, three multiples on top of the original, and then commit to give them all plus two damage. So then we'll have four attacks in the card pool that are three mid eight damage. Um, that's like our big greedy uh, second enhanced play that we can do. And then our big greedy first enhanced play is obviously the big cyclone multiple or the reptile slide reversal, right? The reptile slide reversal is probably going to come up a lot more, um, but the rest are there. So we're doing those. Uh, we need some form of momentum generation. We have hunters once more. We are running one copy of additional knowledge. We are running three copies of Swallow Your Soul so far with one uh, Kika show. Those all gain me momentum. Uh, Hurricane Upper gains me momentum. So we're running momentum. Uh, we need a plan of survival. We're running a big blocking package. Uh, Winners Never Quit lets us block better. Winners Never Quit allows us to find more blocks. Uh, if we can tutor the big cyclone, block with that. Even that being said, maybe we run another big cyclone just for blocking purposes. Uh, we can tutor it, block with it, and our opponent can't pump anymore. That's really good because Winners Never Quit can, can find it for us. Um, Omega Sword. It's good, but we can tutor it. We can tutor it with Guardian of the Spirit Sword, right? Like, So I don't feel like I want to run it at 2. 
because I can just go find it if I need to go find it. Worst case scenario, you know. Um, two Hornbrooks? I don't think I need to. Let's knock that down. Two Hornbrooks doesn't make any sense. I want to run two because it's really cute and I want to see it go off, but that's not smart. That's not smart. Okay, one additional knowledge. One Dark Tournament looms. Uh, the, the lack of uh, another Hornbrook means I can run another Foundation. Let's go like that. Let's come down here. Everything is at threes except for Kika Show. So if I had to look at this, what would I want to run at four? So my win conditions currently. Win conditions. Um, how am I going to deliver attacks? So delivery method one is I can play things as reversals. But even if I play a Reptile Slide multiple one reversal, my opponent can just commit everything to blocking it and then still possibly kill me when I have my card pool clogged with my own cards. So that's not not a viable win condition. Um, the only way it's viable is if my opponent is extending into me, I block at the end of their, closer to the end of their chain, and then Reptile Slide reversal, I can get a kill that way. Um, so win conditions. Uh, we'll go Reptile slide reversal at chain end okay we can do that uh, we can do um, we can play more attacks than they can block so um, we can just go high volume of attacks okay that works and then lastly how else so the only speed pump we have right now is we have second saintly beast, which is only plus two speed, but it's it's not nothing. I don't think I have speed anywhere else. However, so I don't have speed anywhere else. I have stun one there, and that's kind of how else do I get damage through? I get a little bit of speed pump. What's my natural speed? I have five here. I can get six and five here. I can get some damage off on throws. Like I have to work. I really have to work to get the damage through on this deck. Right? Like there's no simple delivery system. Right? Like the easy delivery system to present is high volume of attacks, but that high volume of attack is being presented through multiples. So people running Revoke or things like Hand Cannon can just shut down that multiple play because they're just going to lock out the, the multiple aspects of it. And then I'll have a harder time doing it. Then I'm going to default down to doing what? I can block attacks and do petty reversals to try and get some chip damage in. Um, because I'm low vitality, again, I run the risk of then just dying on that, which means I really want the second copy of Omega Sword. Right? So I want another copy of a Mega Sword because if I'm going to be blocking and reversing, um, your blocks need to ignore progressive in order to stay viable, right? I need to be able to do that. Um, so going through and thinking about this, um, I don't think I want either of these cards. I want to get rid of both of these. So additional knowledge is going to give me more momentum, and Dark Tournament is going to find me momentum, and it's going to find me these cards. Addition, right, Dark Tournament is going to find me more attacks. But currently, my problem isn't going to be finding attacks. My problem is not going to be gaining momentum. My problem right now is delivery. Right. So if you're learning anything from watching this whole thought process video, is that like this is how I'm going through and analyzing where my deck's weaknesses are, where its strengths are, and what it can do, and what my objectives are. So coming through here, right. So we're going back through this. We're trying to fit in surplus momentum engine and surplus stage uh, resource engine, which we're kind of starting to fit those pieces in. Uh, we're getting multiple kick on reversals, which we got off that reptile slide. Uh, we need a block engine, which we got. Uh, we need a card draw, which we now got. But it's this win condition that we're, we're faltering on, right? We, I want speed. I really want speed. I'm getting some speed off second saintly, which is good, but I'd love to put more speed on big cyclones because that, that sounds hilarious, right? Throw a big cyclone, put lots of speed on it, uh, and push it out there. I have no damage pump either. 
Oh no, I do. So I have some damage bump on on the Omega Sword. So this gives me the damage bump. It lets me do block reversal safer. This needs to be at two copies. That's it. Yeah. No, that that does all the stuff I want. Um, this lets me flip foundations to commit foundations in my opponent's staging area. Oh, both players have to commit a face up. That sucks. Um, I don't have consistent readying engine in here. Yeah, but I don't need additional knowledge because I'm running Hunters once more to do the same thing, but I can block with Hunters to get the momentum off of it. So yeah, that's it. These two need to go for sure. That gives me up two more spots. I kind of want those two spots to be... Ugh. We're going to leave them for now. I might have to lose Wall of Goro. Wall of Goro is going to give me vitality in situations where... You know what? Wall Goro comes over here. And the sideboard we're going to have to kind of fiddle with as we go to... God, I hate this whatever is doing that. Um, like Wall of Goro, toughest punk. I might run four wall, four tough punk in sideboard for situations where I'm going into decks that I can't consistently block or blocking doesn't matter. So if I'm running into a full pure throw deck, I don't have full pure throw survivability, right? Like agent team uh, with, you know, Omega blocking is only going to get me so far on a pure throw deck. It's really good against decks that run some throws that are really threatening, but not against decks that are all throw. So decks that are all throw, bringing in lots of dam damage reduction, will give me the ability to, to survive those. Because uh, big throws are very threatening to seven hand sizers. Uh, and like big cyclone will help a little bit to stop the pumps on those. Hmm. Yeah, so I have no damage pump and I have I have no number pump. That's that's basically it. I have no straight number pump outside of what's naturally on the attacks, and naturally this attack lineup doesn't give me tons. It gives me some okay numbers, right? Like I do get ten. Like this is uh like if I just look at stat value, this is fourteen points of stat stick. This is nine points of stat stick, plus it can multiple, right? Five, six, seven. This is eight points of stat stick, plus it gives four points to my next one, right? So if I go uh, Betrayer into Swallow Your Soul, then Swallow Your Soul can go to seven speed. It can get five, seven damage. So it goes seven, seven. So if you go Betrayer, Betrayal into Swallow, Swallow becomes seven, seven throw. That's cute. But again, they're going to block it and only take the four or whatever, right? If they want, depending on what their situation is. Like, it's not... Reptile slide is five, it's eight stat, right? On a four diff, you need to be getting at least eight, just if you don't know how this works. And then on a three diff, you need at least six. That's kind of where you're wanting your stuff. Uh, Hurricane upper, because it's direct momentum generation and I can multiple it, it makes up for the fact that it's only giving me five. Uh, Kika show, that's why I said it's awful. On a six, getting a three six is atrocious, but um, a six six for three is phenomenal. So that's why. I need to make sure that King shows live. And the big cyclone, I'm paying seven but getting 14. So as long as you're getting double your difficulty out of it, that's good. And then uh, your control check, you just gotta kinda evaluate your numbers that way. Hmm. Hmm. So that's it. I am missing a big piece of this. I'm missing delivery, consistent delivery. I'm playing cards. They're doing what I want them to do. The engine is there. So the cards flow, the deck has flow to it now, it makes sense, I can gain momentum, I can gain momentum while blocking, I can do some chain blocking, I have lots of defensive tools, I can protect pieces, I have disruption effects, I've got uh, some tricks, right, I can present threats on my turn and my opponent's turn, I can, I'm putting my opponent into difficult situations uh, so that their decisions are hard to make. The problem that I have right now is pushing through kills. Uh, I need more consistent win conditions. So I'm going to stop again, go look at that, come back, and then hopefully we can wrap this up. All right, we're back again. Um, so a few things that I've noticed now uh, going back through it. Uh, I forgot to put Sense of Morals on the sideboard for in case my opponent is running stun or any kind of committal. Uh, I want Sense of Morals. Um, also on the whole... I need damage pump or speed pump, um, Kapokan training. 
went into the sideboard. So if there's no cards in my opponent's card pool, I can give something plus two speed. So on my opening attack, I can use a plus two speed, but I can also flip it uh, to, to knock out keywords on an attack. Again, I don't know if I'm going to run it, so the sideboard hasn't been built yet, but uh, possibly. So looking at the cards that I found. So I found three cards that caught my eye. Uh, a key, the key to humanity's freedom caught my eye. I can remove and just add an asset from my discard pile directly into my staging area and then destroy it during the end phase. So this is really cute with Hornbrook Walk again because I can bring in Hornbrook, use the enhance on it, or commit it, use the enhance on it, and then I know this can destroy itself at the end of turn. And then um, I know I can get damage off of this thing twice per turn. I can get plus two damage as long as I have an asset. So key to humanity's freedom, I think, almost needs to go into this deck just based off those kind of interactions and what I can do with Hornbrook with it. Really cool there. Um, Cloaked Predator caught my eye. So it's a one diff six. My mid attack will get plus one speed for each attack in my card pool. Um, so this plays pretty well with multiples. So if I multiple something out and then I can commit Cloak Predator, I can push the speed up quite a bit, depending on how many multiples I can push out. So on something like Hoyakusen, I can Hoyakusen, multiple it out, and then pump its speed, make it hard to block, and so on, so on, so on. It's not perfect, but uh, all my attacks are mid, except for the one that I don't care about putting speed on. It's a throw. So um, it's always going to put speed on something uh, worthwhile. And it's a good spam. So we're going to weigh this against the other spam. And then lastly, um, the first Lady of Fighting. So I can commit to give a kick attack plus two speed. So again, I can pump my big Cyclones with it. Or I can pump Hyacuson with it. Um, or I can pump Reptile Slide with it. On top of that, though, my ranged attacks will get stunned one. Um, Reptile Slide is also ranged. So it can give Reptile Slide stun one. And then Hurricane Upper has uh, ranged on it as well. And then so does Kitty Show. So I have seven ranged attacks in the deck, um, and then I have six, nine, nine kicks. I don't know how I feel about it, but it can give the stun one without committing, which is pretty good, and then plus two speed after that. I don't know. It's such low value there. Key to Humanity's Freedom, I think, needs to go in. But I'm looking for speed still. I still need speed. Uh, Cloak Predator might just be superior. Right, because as soon as I get two attacks in there, it's giving me the same speed value as First Lady. And then as soon as I get three attacks in there, uh, right, ah, it's so much easier to play versus First Lady. We'll see what kind of slots I have. So I pulled out two action cards. I can just instantly put in, uh, we'll put in two keys. Right, we'll go like that. What do I have for block coverage? So just looking really quickly, I have high, high, high. I at least have 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 high blocks, it looks like. What am I doing for lows? 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 lows, and the lows are bad. I have very bad low blocks. Um, that almost can justify running... Um, so Bakery Poster Girl is actually one of my best low blocks at 2+, plus, and then Dark Side. So I might run another Dark Side, actually. Even though it's not turn 1 playable, it is uh, turn 1 don't die to low attacks. That's important, right? I can technically use uh, Omega Sword as a quasi-low, right? So this can count as all zones. It's a pseudo-omni block. And then mids were doing fine. Key to Humanity's Freedom. I really like that I can do that trick with Hornbrook. This almost makes me want to go like this. Uh, put Hornbrook back to 2 now. So we're going to put Hornbrook back to 2. We have Key. We're running Winners Never Quit. We can push Key up to 3. Let's pretend we're going to put it up to 4. Let's just pretend for a minute. There's no block on it. That's okay. Uh, First Lady's not coming. Cloak Predator might come. That's a really good card. I really like it. Uh, I like Cloak Predator, I think, more than I like Push the Limit. Yep. I like it more than I like Push the Limit. So we're going to put in these. Starting to feel pretty good about this. Right? 10, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 34 foundations currently. 34 foundations. We have 9 actions, assets. Um, 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19 attacks. Yeah, so we're at 62 cards right now. 
62 cards with 19 attacks and a 7 hand sizer. Right? So if you want to know how to do that math, watch me awkwardly stare up as I grab a calculator. Blop. Okay. So 62 cards, right? So uh, if 19 out of 62 uh, means 30% times 7 cards in hand, so 2.14. So that means uh, just over 2 cards per hand of 7 should be attacks. Right, so if you're trying to get a two attack, that's good for two attacks per uh, hand draw. If I'm drawing five, so let's just knock this back down. So if I'm drawing five cards, let's say I build out, hold two attacks. So now I, I have opening hand, draw seven. Two of them are attacks, five of them are other cards. I play those five other cards. Then I draw five, so multiply by five. I should get 1.5 more. So I should get three, maybe four attacks on turn two. Is that, you understanding how that math works? Um, so I might want to push that a little bit higher if I want to bump that number a little bit closer to the 4. And I would do that by running one more attack. One more attack or reducing the other cards in your deck a little bit more. Three winners never quit. I never know if it's risky to run that card at 3 or actions at a high count. Like, I like it, but it's only good at blocking. And first enhance... For plus X damage, X equals my opponent's hand size, and it stays in the card pool after playing it. You know what? You're going away. Down to 61 cards. Um, and then I want another attack, right? Three big cyclones is fair. Three Hoyakusen is fair. Um, I do not want to see big cyclone early. I do not want to see it often, but when I want it, sweet lord, do I want it. Hoyakusen, I can see this card early because it can gain me momentum. Uh... Do I want to see it often? Uh, not really. And in multiples, kind of, because I can play one, get multiple, uh, get momentum off it, play another one, possibly get more momentum off of it, and then string it out. Uh, Betrayer Betrayal, this is like plus two card draw in Chun-Li. I can just commit her to get two cards off this, which is pretty cool, and it's a stun one, and it's a reversal. And it Fury combos into Hoyakusen to get it to be a multiple two. So going like Betrayer Betrayal into Hoyakusen is a really good play. Especially because this one increases the chance of me finding this. Reptile side feels fine at 3. Because you can play it, or I can just find it later on its own. Uh, Hurricane Upper at 3 is good. It's going to be hard to kill people with this thing. Although it's cheap, I can play to the end and multiple 2 it out for 9. And then if I have resources with her, I can commit for 15 damage on a 3 diff. Right? So at the end of a chain, I can play Hurricane Upper and then Barf on 15 damage. Hurricane Upper might close out games, actually. Swallow Your Soul is Momentum Generation, and a can, and Kika Show. The, the hot 1x Kika Show. Betrayer Betrayal. I feel like this is, has a high chance of hitting. 5 speed mid stun 1. Draw 2 cards. That's a respectable poke. Are people going to block 3 damage for 5 speed? Usually not. I think that's an easy push. Here's the thing, too, is if I find more than one copy, so here's the thing, if I find two copies of this in hand, I play one, commit my character, draw two, next for did three, gets plus two, plus two, I play a second copy of it, the second one comes in at seven speed five, it's still stun one, and I could still draw two because my character's committed. Yeah, four copies of this makes sense. That's, that's a no-brainer now that I look at it. Um, Swallow Your Soul is my, is easy momentum generation. And I think I want to see this. If it does three or more, combos off of three damage. So if I'm running this and this, that puts me at 21 attacks. Right? Do some quick math again. 21 divided by 63, 0 0.33. Oh, I'm exactly at 0 0.33. That's cool. So I'm 0 0.33 uh, times 7, 2.3. That's good. 2.3 plus, right, plus 2.3, yeah, 3.9. That puts me at 4. I like that. Right? So if I'm attacking, uh, I have a high chance of only seeing two attacks in my opening hand. Um, I've reduced the odds of hitting actions in my opening hand and having cards that I can actually play into my field. That's, that's very good as well. Um, Kiwi Manny's Freedom is now giving me some damage pump. 
Saintly Beast and Cloak Protector is giving me speed. I have speed reduction over here. I have uh, foundation control over here. That's why I don't think I need like push the limit as my spam. I think Cat Force is going to do a good job. Hunters, what's more, is more momentum gain. I'm running some decent momentum gain. Arranging a deal is uh, card draw, two plus mid block. I think this all feels good. This feels good now. Uh, sideboard hasn't been figured out yet, and that won't happen until... Uh, oh, I'm all over it. I'm not going to make this video any longer than it already is. It's really long. But if you watch this, it was to watch me uh, review a deck and try to focus it. Right? So now my win conditions, I can... Right? Now I have the option of... Uh, I don't just need to do high volume attacks. I can... Um, I can stat stick attacks now like I can just make them stat sticks um, I can put speed on uh, big C big cyclone right I can put speed on big C now I can uh, I can end chain hurricane right hurricane alt upper multiple that's a that's a way to end a game um, and then yeah and then my last one's chip damage. Chip damage through throws and reverses. Right? I think that's where we're at now. Run at least one kick. We got that. Run at least one multiple two plus. We've got that. We actually have two of them. Um, need some form of momentum generation. We have lots of that. We have a plan of survival. Yep. We need at least two win conditions, which we have. Try to fit in surplus momentum generation. Um, I don't know if we have surplus, but we have a pretty decent amount. Uh, take advantage of having a committed character, which we can do. Try to multiple kick on reversals, which we're doing. We need an engine to block, which we are also doing. We need some form of card draw. We have multiple forms. Um, and then we have many win conditions. Uh, so then it's going to be a matter of figuring out what other holes compared to meta, right? So now we're doing meta picks. Uh, which is what they're, where the sideboard's going to come in, right? I'll have to review that another time. For this one, I'm ending it. This is the first draft. I like this. Uh, I will test this, and then I will probably build more Chun Li's, and just like we did with the J Talbain. But this one was way longer than the last ones. Hot damn! Uh, so until next time, yeah, this was Toy. I'll talk to you guys later.